Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and this is Necromunda November. It's the very last day, a series I've been running all through November, and it began with a couple of big box sets, Dark Uprising, Underhive, and it ends here today with the Delac Gang. Hard to believe it's already the end of November. I've got through eight pieces of content just dedicated to Necromunda, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. What a fantastic game. What a fantastic um, range of expansions and gangs. There's more to come as well. There's a few new releases just recently for Necromunda, and I'll be excited to get into those in the future. Heck, I might even do another one of these this time next year. Who knows? But for now, let's get stuck into the House de Lac. Have a look at their gang here. Not my favorite gang, to be honest. You would only have to look at, like, last week's Gangs of the Underhive review to realize that. But perhaps the miniatures are going to be where House de Lac really shines. So let's get stuck into this gang, and I will be back in a moment. Now, here they are, and boy, are they pretty. Wow. This is not a just a career choice. This is a life decision. You are committing your in the rest of your existence to the uh, Delac gang. When you start to employ this level of physical modification, augmentation. Yeah, you're, you're in it for the long haul when you sign up for this, this band of beauties. <laughs> and let's just see, like we've seen with the others, uh, they'll have sort of, oh wow, the paint job on that guy is fantastic. Wow. Uh, yeah, so with the construction options, it'll it'll probably be like, assam yeah, assemble named characters or make up your own guy. And I think assembling the main characters, you at least have a sort of guarantee you're going to get uh, one of everyone in there. Because if this is anything like the other Necromunda gangs we've looked at, they're going to be really cleverly designed so that while you have a repeat sprue, you also have... Um, no sense that you're doubling up on anything. Okay, so let's check this out. Got our now very familiar bases. Okay, we've got the instruction manual in black and white, and this will most likely go through them in pairs. Let's see, yeah. So it's like, as you can see here, there's the same sort of lower body with cloak that's repeated here, and then I'll have a different sort of arm configuration, different head. So here's one of them, and here's the other one. Enough differences there to, to not really realize they're the same sculpt at the core. Um, and then it just goes through each of the builds separately. Kind of remind me of the guys from Dark City, that movie, um, where it was like Mr. Book and Mr. Tree and all these strange names. I mean, the look of them looks like those, but these names are yeah, much more appropriate than Mr. Book. And we should have a duplicated sprue. We do. Oh, such beautiful faces. Check those out. Actually, the, the detail in these is glorious. I can see how they're able to accomplish that paint job on the back um, cover of the box there. Because the sculpted details are so clear. that You'd be able to pick out those augmented eyes and everything. Interesting weapons, too. Some more long guns there, and uh, this is kind of cool. I'm going to drill through each of these, so this will probably look really nice when it's finished. I'm liking these um, open stocks as well. Uh, some of the clothing detail there, body armor, holstered pistols, some more different weapons. Look like, oh wow, is that a separate hand? Oh, I just love those. And hopefully no cigars in this one, but that single hand is yeah anyway uh let's go get them built see what they're like it was a fairly risky prospect putting my least favorite gang from necromunda into the last video of necromunda november usually would save sort of your favorite to last but i don't know why i went this way but but i'm kind of glad i did because the lore artwork like this i mean it's fine but it just does nothing for me the miniatures themselves however are actually pretty cool. I'm just going to get straight into them here. Here's one with a shotgun. And as you can see, it's not your typical looking shotgun. This is a serious bit of kit. It's got a, a really interesting stock there. 
It just looks like, I mean, look at the bore on this thing. For sure, I could have drilled that a little narrower, but I thought it fitted well with this, the shape of the shotgun. I love that big pump sort of on it as well there. And it just looks really good. I think he's also carrying a grenade in the other hand as well, which is always a good shout. And um, yeah, I like them. I, I like the, the, there is a bit of movement in them. I kind of like the way this one's sort of hunched over because these are tall characters. Now, really good, really nice looking mini. And there are some really interesting poses as well. And look at this one with the, the twin daggers. And he's got the Delac version of the autogun slung over his shoulder there. And I just really like this. I like the, the sort of the way he's holding those daggers is cool. He's even got sort of a finger up in the air here. And yeah, the, there's just tiny little touches throughout the accessorizing you can do around the belt. The actual sort of buckling detail on these robes. And then the respirator hanging down there as well. The faces, yeah, you could probably get quite inventive with your paint job on those and make it into something super creepy or just really interesting looking or creepy and interesting. And yeah, I like that one as well. Yeah, color me surprised. Uh, the third one here has a collection of daggers hanging off of his belt. He's got this really neat looking staff with this, the, the snake or I guess some kind of like snake dragon type creature the the skull on the top of it here as well i like the holstered pistol again that sort of snake logo on the side there just some really interesting delicate details throughout this miniature uh this is the flechette pistol looks kind of like a submachine gun but in house de lac that's a flechette pistol which i imagine is not a pleasant thing to get tagged by I like the way he's supporting the gun here. This is actually a grav gun, so yeah, this one deserves a bit of respect. Uh, pretty lethal bit of kit, so yeah, you'd want to keep that stabilized and pointing towards enemy, let's just say. But just again, some really nice accessories around the belt. Uh, just very well made. I do like the way the, the robes are just slightly open there at the side to give that sort of feeling of, of movement. Kind of cool one here. He's just pulled up what looks like an incredibly long pin out of this grenade. It's a it's an unusual unusual length, I would say that for a pin. But um, the auto gun slung over the shoulder is really nice. Again, a lot of these sort of um, Delac house iconography on show here throughout these sort of weapons, and a couple more grenades there just on the side of the belt. Face wise, again, some they're kind of serene looking. But you could add a bit of drama to the eyes, I guess, with a bit of glow there or something. Red or green or blue or something. On the uh, box here, they don't really have anything. They're just kind of metallic looking eyes. I think a little bit of light coming from inside that could be interesting. And here we have the Delac version of the Laz pistol, which looks pretty hefty. You know, it's, a, it's some size, whether that's an extended battery pack or whatever, I'm not sure. Uh, but another one showing a little bit of movement here, a bit of action, and again, just fantastically sculpted. And just because I can, I, I gave this one twin auto pistols. I thought that was a, a, f a fairly uh, <laughs> aggressive loadout. And again, just, just sort of nice posture, and then these aren't standing like statues. They're in mid-action, running around, heavily armed, and I, I think a lot more interesting than they were in the book. And that said, this one is a lot more static, but I don't think it's missing out on anything. It's got the sniper rifle, or as the Delac call it, the long rifle, and it's missing its scoop, and that's because he's got the scoop in his hand. And that, to me, adds that little bit of narrative to it, um, that he's either, you know, slung the rifle for the day and he's putting the scoop back in a pouch here or something, or he's just about to get set up. But it just gives it that little bit of visual interest. And our penultimate miniature from House to Lack. He's walking across here. He's firing with his auto pistol. And he also has a nice Delac hand flamer unit there <laughs> in reserve for a guess when he gets it a little bit closer. But very, very nice looking mini. And then the last of the Delac minis is just my favorite one. The pair of stub guns here up in the air. 
This is something so Wild West about that that I love, especially when you consider he's got this big long duster on. I wonder, could you paint these up with like sort of that tan color duster and give them like sort of a dust effect on the, the bottom of the robes or whatever? I don't know if that would work, but I kind of feel that it, it connects well with the look of this one anyway. Uh, the three huge daggers there hanging down, they're practically swords. And again, the same sort of level of fabric detail, all the buckles and everything that we've seen throughout this range. And yeah, that, that was great. That was a lot of fun. And here we are at the end. The lack were a big surprise. I'm not afraid to admit that I was wrong. I'm not a big fan of the artwork in the books that I'd seen so far and on the covers and things, but the actual miniatures themselves, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, look great. They have great weapons. They, I had initially thought when I looked at the book that they were a bit nerfy or super soakery, but seeing them here in three dimensions, no, they, they, they don't feel like that at all. And those big old shotguns with the massive stocks on them, they, they're, they're savage. I love those. Well, here we are at the end of Necromunda November and it's absolutely flown in. Somebody asked me the other day, would I do another one next November in 2021? And I guess, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I certainly wouldn't be opposed to getting any of the Necromunda sets. I've got a lot of uh, fun out of building them and exploring the lore and everything. So, yeah, I, I probably would. But, I mean, for now, what do I think? I just think it's so cool. It's, it's an inexpensive way of getting into something from the Warhammer 40k universe. You have small teams here, so you could grab yourself a couple of small teams, grab yourself a rule book, and you're off to the races. You can, sure, you can make scenery out of anything, you know, egg boxes or whatever you want, but it kind of aligns it with the likes of like Blood Bowl, War Cry, Kill Team, bound full of strategy, and backed up by some really interesting lore. It just feels like they've got a really solid product here that they're keeping on growing. It's great to see new gangs being released for it, expansions to existing gangs. We had that whole big, you know, new box set last year, Dark Uprising, which is just, you know, phenomenal. But you don't have to get that. You could get yourself a rule book, you get yourself a couple of gangs, and you could give it a spin, see what you think. What's my favorite gang? I'm not really sure. I, I like the Corpse Grinders a lot more than I thought I was going to. I like the Delac a lot more than I thought I was going to. The, the Palanites are pretty cool, even though I struggled with pronouncing their name for like an entire video. But I do think I like little elements from each of them. They each have a, a, a piece of the aesthetic and the character that is, that is cool, that, that jumps out at me. If I had to pick one gang, though, I'd say it'd be a toss-up between Orlok and Asher. I think they're visually really interesting. I think their their lore has that sort of edge to it that really appeals to me. And yeah, that would be my coin toss. Asher, Orlock, it'd be one of those two. Well, that's it. That's Necromunda November all wrapped up. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe if you did. And um, I think that the channel's coming along nicely. It's, it's growing slow but steady. A few collaborations coming up that should be pretty exciting. Really, really looking forward to those. On the next episode of Grey Primer, it's going to be weird not doing Necromunda, but I'm going back to my comfort zone. I'm going to have a retrospective look at a Blood Bowl book. It's the Star Players book from the late 80s. I'm going to have a quick look through that and get me all ready for the release of second season. But for now, thank you so much for joining me in Necromunda November. Don't forget to check out the other episodes. And until we meet again, take care and bye-bye.